Hey, in this video, we're going to take a look at something called the reaction quotient. And the reaction quotient is a way to predict which way a reaction will proceed in order to reach equilibrium. Like right now, are there more products than there should be at equilibrium? Or are there more reactants than there should be at equilibrium? Basically, it's a way of telling if there's more reactants than there should be, then this is going to move toward the products, it's going to form more products to e reach equilibrium. Or if there's more products than there should be, then some of those products will convert back to reactants in order to reach equilibrium. But sometimes we don't know where we are. Are we too much on the product side, so we go this way? Are we too much on the reactant side, so we go back the other way? Calculating this Q value and comparing it to our equilibrium constant K will tell us, will this reaction proceed towards the reactants? and proceed toward the products. So let's start by comparing Q and K. Just what are they? What's the difference between them? A K value uses concentrations at equilibrium, and that's the key there. That's the big difference between K and Q. K is looking at equilibrium. What are the concentrations? Q, however, is using the concentrations as they are now. We're at some point before the reaction reaches equilibrium. The Q will tell us what's the current state of things. What's the ratio of products over reactants now? So that's what Q tells us. Q tells us what are the concentrations now. K tells us what are the concentrations at equilibrium. You calculate them pretty much the same way though. For K values, we'll look at the products raised to their powers over the reactants raised to their powers, but only using values at equilibrium. So whenever we substitute in values for the products and the reactants, we have to make sure those are taken at equilibrium. Whereas for Q, we calculate exactly the same way. We'll take the products raised to the powers of their coefficients, divided by the reactants raised to their powers, but we're looking at what are the concentrations now or at some point in the reaction before it's reached that equilibrium state. So there's three possibilities for Q then. Q could be greater than K, Q could be less than K, or Q could be equal to K. Let's take a look at what happens in each of those three scenarios. For our first example, what is true whenever Q is greater than K? Well, what would that mean? Well, if Q is greater than K, that means that this reaction right now is favoring the products more than it should at equilibrium. In other words, compared to this K ratio, the Q ratio favors the products more. In other words, we're too far on the product side and it should shift back to the reactants. Now that can get a little bit confusing and hard to kind of remember and kind of logic your way through all of that. There's an easier way to remember which way the reaction is gonna shift in order to reach equilibrium, and that's by using a number line. So plot K on the number line and plot Q on the number line. Well, we just said that Q is greater than K in this particular case. So I'll plot Q on the right side of the number line. Well, Q is how things are now, and things are always gonna to move toward equilibrium. So we move from Q, toward equilibrium, in other words, to the left. And here the left represents the reactant side, the right represents the product side. So if Q is greater than K, plot them on a number line, Q always moves toward K. So this is gonna to move toward the reactants to reach equilibrium. So reaction proceeds toward reactants if Q is greater than K. Now a second example then is what if Q is less than K? Well, same thing, plot K and Q on the number line. K right here, we're going to put Q to the left of it because it's less. Q always moves toward K or always moves toward equilibrium. So this is going to shift to the right or towards the products. The reaction will proceed towards the products. What does that mean? Well, that means that there's, there's too much reactant right now and there's not enough product compared to equilibrium. So the rate at which reactants become products is greater right now. It's going to move towards the products to reach equilibrium. And finally, what if Q is equal to K? Well, if Q and K are equal, then that just means we're already at equilibrium. That's what it means to be at equilibrium. The current state right now is the same as the K value, which is the state at equilibrium. So how do we know that we need to use this Q value? It usually won't say, hey, calculate the Q value in an AP chemistry problem. Here's when you know that you need to calculate Q. Whenever you're given concentrations right now, and you wanna know, is this gonna to move towards the reactants or towards the products? Now, if there's no products yet, so if the products right now are zero, you only have reactants, you don't need to calculate Q, don't waste your time. Think about it. If there's no products right now, well, that would mean that Q is equal to zero. And if Q is equal to zero, there's only one way it can go, which is toward the right, the reaction would proceed towards the products which makes sense, right? If there are no products, the reactants will move toward the product, they'll become products, right? So if you ever don't have products, if the products are zero, 
you don't need to calculate Q, Q is zero, we're gonna make some products. But a lot of times you can't tell. Here's an example where you can't tell if the Q is greater or less than, so you need to calculate it. So here's how we can use Q to determine the reaction direction. So here's our example. A rigid container holds a mixture of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia gas at given concentrations. We'll write those down here in a second. Which way will the reaction proceed to reach equilibrium? Is it gonna to shift towards the reactants or toward the products? Here's our three concentrations for this reaction. Here's the reaction itself, N2 plus three hydrogen, gives two ammonia gases. And these are all gases in this case. And our K value is 0 0.040. Now looking at all these numbers, I don't know which way it's gonna go, right? Um, none of these are zero. They're all some decimal value. Our K is a decimal. We've got coefficients of one, three, and two. I can't just look at this and know which way the reaction is gonna go. I don't know if we need to move towards the products to reach equilibrium or move toward the reactants. I just don't know at this point. So what can we do? We can calculate Q. Now the problem doesn't say anything about Q. It just says which way will the reaction go. And that's our indicator that we need to calculate Q and then compare it to K. So let's go ahead and do that. Our Q expression is gonna equal NH3 squared over N2 times H2 cubed. And we're just gonna substitute in these values. We know these are not equilibrium values. They're the values now, and that's just because that's what it tells us in the problem. A rigid container contains these concentrations of the reactants and products. We're not at equilibrium, it didn't say that we are. So we'll substitute those values into our Q. And when we calculate that out, we're gonna get that Q is equal to 0.137. Now I'll compare that to my K value. 0.137 of course is greater than 0.04. And then I can plot those on my number line. I've got my K, I said my Q is greater. Q always moves toward equilibrium, which is towards the left on my number line. So then this reaction is going to proceed toward the reactants or toward the left side of our equation here in order to reach equilibrium. So that's an example of how we can use the Q value or the reaction quotient, compare that to the K or the equilibrium constant to determine which way a reaction will proceed in order to reach equilibrium. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.